some things like I was talking about earlier, you know, when we were visiting to start the show of you get all these calls like at, you know, odd hours of the night and guys and gals want to say, hey, what about this? What about this pick? What do you think about what's going to happen here? So, you know, when you try and like I keep a notepad next to my bed now to just write down things because you don't always remember what everybody's saying and things like that. But yeah, what's interesting is I during the break, this whole thing with, you know, maybe reaching out to Houston, moving up to their pick at 13. I, I have a couple of guys down there that I completely trust that could tell me exactly what's going on. And they said to, to keep an eye at 13, what happens. The one re- thing that would keep Houston from maybe moving 13 is what happens at receiver ahead of them. Hmm. So that that's something, you know, and I, and I don't... eyeball that Ohio State guy? I, I, maybe it's Chris Olave. You know, huh. maybe it's... It, we'll see with London, his situation. Sure. Um, but they, they said, listen, they, they're pretty adamant. And You're the, not blocked, 817. Yeah, with the uh, the thing with... Um, I think with the, with the Cowboys trying to trade up, if you're trading up, what do you have in mind? Now, if you're trading up for one of those wide receivers, say you do love London, the, the problem you run into is you've got teams like at the Jets at 10 that are interested in a wide receiver. You know, you got teams behind, you know, teams like the Saints who can make a small move to jump up, you know, and get, you know, and that way the Texans aren't falling completely down to the bottom of the board. So you might see the Texans, like I say, they said keep an eye on how the wide receivers go. And I think the Cowboys are probably, as Jerry would say, throwing chum in the water. And they make calls. I mean, they honestly make calls. I mean, that was my responsibility the day before the draft was to call, make sure our phones were good. Hey, you need to, if you want to make any trades, you want to make any player movement, whatever, get a hold of Steven. You, you, know. could make a, you could make a story that any team is contacting on the team Absolutely. about a trade. Absolutely. You're, che- all those ta- you're calls checking are phones. You're checking phones. So you don't, you don't think there's a high probability the Cowboys trade with Houston? I think, there's, I think Houston has, you know, the, the Nick Casario down there saying he's got six, seven names in mind. I think Houston's holding on to 13 to see what, was, what, what wide receiver potentially could be there for you. So okay. that's why I think that maybe the Cowboys – now, if the Cowboys try to go up and the Cowboys are going up for a receiver and you trade up there and you don't get the receiver, you know, what's your, what's your other fallback? Is it Cross or one of those other guys, the offensive tackle, which we've talked about? Okay, okay, I'm starting to hear some things about uh, – about, we mentioned the, the, uh, with Green, Kenyon Green at Texas A&M in the knee. Hearing more now, it's a more of a, a meniscus thing in his right knee. And there's some concern around the league, not so much with the Cowboys, but concern around the league that he plays at 324 pounds. Hmm. So is this going to be a long-term problem? Is this something that he's going to have to deal with? Because there's been scopes, clean-outs, stuff like that when it comes to that knee, that right knee. Okay. So some people might be backing up from that. But from what I got from the Cowboys, it was more like a, hey, well, let's see. You know, we it's nothing that concerns us now but it might be something that concerns in the future okay so you're starting to hear some you know you're starting to hear some people talk about zion johnson right we've talked about zion johnson okay the thing with zion johnson is there's there's that and i like to say it there's that minefield that you're going to have to walk you want able to get zion johnson my my guys and gals last night were saying hey zion johnson keep an eye on him 17 uh, with the Los Angeles Chargers, kind of looking for offensive tackle, maybe interior help there. Keep an eye at New England at 21, looking for interior help, but they can also take the linebacker. And that's when you and I were talking about uh, that Lloyd. situation. Yeah, Floyd, uh, with, or excuse me, Lloyd, Lloyd. That, that maybe Lloyd. that, maybe that the, the Patriots say, okay, Lloyd is on the board, so is Zion Johnson. You know they're going to have to make that that call between the two because, but I'm hearing it pretty strong that those are the two things that the Patriots are, are looking at right now. And then we need to see what happens at Arizona. They're looking at wide mm-hmm. receiver. They're working at looking also at some at uh, at guard as okay. well. So that's kind of where we're at. When you say people are talking about Zion Johnson, is this people connecting the Cowboys to yeah. Zion Johnson? Yeah, I think so too. I think that, that you mean there's there's there there there. It sounds like to me that, that, that we've mentioned this before, that the Cowboys have second-round grades on these guys. Now, 
again, is it is it the concern about the about the knee? We'll see. Is Johnson ahead of Green? I'm kind of getting the vibe that Green is ahead of Johnson, but let's see what happens. Again, if if Zion Johnson goes then you're in a situation where you're going to probably have to make a determination on do you really want to take green and do you want to take green because of, again, you're having to deal with a potential with the knee going. Okay, forward. there's no way that knee pushes him to 56? I don't think so. I mean, it might take him out of the – it might take him to the bottom of the draft, but I think there's enough teams that would say, no, we'll go ahead we'll go ahead and, and take him You know, right here. Again, the Cowboys might pass on that. But I'm also hearing some things about – there's some going on some split – in the cowboy room about burks we mentioned some of the stuff with maturity and things like that maybe a little bit of like des bryant there's a split going on in that room where you have you know where you have scouts are lining up for burks the coaches not so much are interested in burks hmm. so now there's where we talked about with jerry jones is there that is there that where he's going to have to step in and say okay how do we really really feel about about this player but i'm i'm kind of getting a vibe too i talked about it yesterday with burks very very strong vibes on green bay at 22. so you might burks might be completely out of the out of the picture uh for the cowboys unless there's a trade-up because i feel like that green bay at 22 is that team that you're going to need to to worry about right there okay um the um the, also, the thing, you mentioned the outside-the-box stuff. We talked about that a little earlier. It made me think. It gave me some pause about, okay, Peter King said, well, hey, Linderbaum, mock draft, Cowboys, 24, here we go. Well, I was like, no, because to me, the Cowboys, they don't really, you know, are they going to take an undersized center? Are they going to struggle with somebody that maybe struggles a little bit with power there, uh, you know, point-of-attack player and all? But a really, really good player overall. You know, when you talk about zone schemes, the athletic ability. Well, now it made me think outside the box. Linderbaum, outside the box as far as the measurables go. Dean, outside the box. I'm hearing, hearing they're circling back around, talking about Nicobe Dean. In fact, if they get if they get wiped out there at, uh, at 24 or can't move or can't go anywhere, does Dean now become the pick? Because there's a lot of people in that room that really, really do like him a lot. So him, Davis, the the big uh, tackle from uh, from Georgia, they haven't taken a they haven't taken a, a one technique. I mean, you look at about the you know, first round defensive tackles. I'm going to say, you know, go back to all the way to Russell Merrill, I believe in 1991. Uh, I think I've got my uh, my years right as far as all that goes. But that's something that there's some, there's some those are kind of those out of the box things okay. that we're thinking of that Jerry hinted about that you might want to consider for the Cowboys here as well.